Welcome back. Tom Harvin here with you. And on the line with us is our old friend Greg Pallast, the uh, investigative reporter, uh, investigative journalist, just all around good guy and general genius. Hey, Greg, welcome back to the program. Glad to be with you, Tom, again. And, and I should say, author of The Best Democracy Money Can Buy, which you can watch on uh, Amazon. Uh, you can stream it for two bucks, and uh, gregpalace.com is website. So, Greg, the, uh, this is the first chance you and I have had a talk since the election in Georgia's 6th. And I know you were down there doing research on it. You were on this program uh, last week or the week before talking about what you learned down there. Uh, tell us what you, what you know now uh, a couple of days after the election. Well, I mean, officially, Karen Handel, the Republican won, and the, the, the referendum on Trump, Trump won. Uh, that's the wonderful story. And with 100% of the precincts reporting, according to the New York Times, with 100% reporting, you have Handel winning by about 3.5%, 11,000 votes. That's official. Now, the reality, which isn't official. Um, when we report toll, um, vote tolls in America. We do something that they don't do in England or France or anywhere else. We don't report the votes that weren't counted. That is, it, I expect to have uh, 10, 20,000 provisional ballots there. That's when people show up to the polls, their names are missing from the voter rolls, they're giving these these uh, write-in ballots. I call them uh, placebo ballots because they let you think you voted, but you haven't. We're going to see thousands of those, maybe tens of thousands of those in the Georgia 6th. Uh, they haven't reported any of those. We won't even get a number till tomorrow, and I don't even know if it'll be honest. We also don't report spoiled votes, that is, uh, mistakes in the machine um, where votes aren't counted. That's usually about 1.5% of the vote. I think here it will be higher. Why do I think these numbers are significant and higher? Because if you saw our, my last reports with you, um, or you go to gregpalace.com and uh, get the whole video reports from there, you'll see that we had tens of thousands tens of thousands of voters who were registered by African-American and Asian-American voter registration organizations whose names were never, never entered on the voter rolls. So if they show up to vote, they might get a provisional ballot, but it won't be counted because their names are not on the rolls. Yeah, it was, it was to the when, tune of something like 10,000 Korea, uh, Korean ancestry Americans and 40,000 African-Americans, am I remembering right? That's right. Not all of them were in the six, but it was concentrated. The uh, effort was concentrated in Georgia's six congressional CD. So you literally have groups like New Georgia Project and uh, once the Asian American Legal Advocacy Center who were collecting votes. And then those after they, they were actually raided by the Republican state officials on cockamamie grounds, which are all dropped and threatening these people with criminal charges for registering voters uh, and uh, but it shut down some of the registration drive. It scared away a lot of people. And they still did not win in court the right to get the names that they collected put on the voter rolls in time for this vote. Hmm. In addition, and this is something that uh, I, I want to credit uh, the Nate Cohn of the New York Times for this. You have about half the vote in that district was early voting, Tom. And um, overwhelmingly, those are Democratic votes. Uh, African-Americans tend to do souls to the polls day on Sundays. They vote early. You had uh, Ossoff winning the early vote by nearly two to one. So why didn't that put him over? The answer uh, was actually uh, the, a great job by Nate Cohn, who gave us a map that said they'd move the early polling places out of Democratic DeKalb County, northern uh, Atlanta, and um, move them north into the Republican districts. And he says, as you move away from an early voting station, the number of people who vote early massively drops off. In other words, if the polling station's down the street, you'll go. If it's four miles away, especially if you don't have a car, uh, you're less, a heck of a lot less likely to go. That's a big district. Some of those polling stations were 15 miles away. Yeah, uh, We County also had tremendous huge. problems. Yeah. It's huge, and and that's only one of the three counties in the district. And so they they moved the early right. polling stations out of DeKalb, which is the Democratic area. Right. This is just one of the many tricks, not registering the voters. Um, and we also had tremendous problems where people were showing up at the polls, not finding their names on the rolls, who'd already been registered and had voted many years at the same polling station. And we had mentioned that uh, Karen Handel, personally, the Republican candidate, admitted to me in fact, she was proud that they were purging the voter rolls in her district uh, on a system called cross-check, which we've discussed before. It's about accusing people of voting twice. They, they don't vote twice, but if your name is common, like John Black, 
uh, who is almost uh, certain to be an African American, um, you could lose your vote because they said your vote is somewhere else. They were shifting polling stations. I talked to Reverend uh, Jenkins of the Eagles Nest Church. He and his wife voted at the same place for years. They showed up together to vote. And what happened, um, they, they said his wife, who lives obviously with the pastor, um, had a vote at a far-flung station. So she went to the other station. This is a husband and wife at the same house, shifted. She showed up at the other places. Oh, you're not listed here. You'll have to fill out a provisional ballot. Uh, she raised hell because she knows her rights and, and was able to avoid that provisional ballot. But most people have no idea what's happening. And so does this account for the 11,000, the 3.5% vote total difference? Um, I normally don't speculate, so I won't. I'll say it absolutely yes, um, because if you take away the number of people who should have been on those voter rolls and not registered, if you take away the shenanigans with the early voting, if you if we uh, take a look into the spoilage bin of votes, and according to the Civil Rights Commission, your chance your vote will spoil. That is some technical reason why your vote didn't count is 900 percent higher if you're black than if you're white. You put all those things together, and I don't I don't think that handle if you had a complete total fair vote of all eligible voters that um, that handle had won. So yeah, so Trump won his referendum the way Trump won his presidency by shoplifting it. Right. This was voter suppression. Greg, you've, you've been on this beat for a long, long time. I mean, you were the one who, uh, yeah. when you were reporting for the BBC, exposed the uh, uh, all the African Americans in Florida that Jeb Bush threw off the voting rolls so that his brother could get within 536 votes of stealing the presidency. Um, yes. Why is it that the media absolutely, it, with the singular exception of Joy Reid putting you on her show on MSNBC over the weekend, uh, to the best of my knowledge, that's about it. Why is it that the media in this country, and the Democratic Party for that matter, why is Nancy Pelosi not, you know, the, the night of the, ele the election or, or today as, as these numbers are coming out, why are the Democratic Party and the corporate media in this country not discussing this? Well, this is very interesting. And by the way, I want to underscore your point in this country. I work for the mainstream media in the rest of the world. That is BBC, Rolling Stone. Oh, well, Rolling Stone here is not the mainstream. BBC, The Guardian. These are the main English language news outlets of the world. And so uh, these reports are mainstream. The rest of the world does know what's going on, but we don't. Why? Well, you bring up Nancy Pelosi, who's actually talked to me and is a big fan of mine. Why doesn't she bring these things up? You know, this is factual matter. It's, I'm not speculating. Uh, we know that these uh, that the, the groups uh, uh, had registered tens of thousands of people in the district and, and their names never appeared. This is in court records. Uh, why don't they bring it up? Because they've started this trope, the Democratic Party, that the Russians stole the election. The Russians, the Russians, the Russians. And when Donald Trump said he might not accept the results of the election, the Democratic Party and Hillary Clinton began with no Democratic candidate or no candidate in for president in history has ever challenged the vote, the presidential vote. That's insanely wrong. Most in our history, in our 200 year history, you know, Tom, uh, that uh, uh, half the elections have been challenged. And Al Gore went to the United States Supreme Court to overturn the results, the clearly fixed results in Florida. Right. So but the Democratic Party has decided that anyone who brings up who says that the American electoral system is anything but the, the envy of the world, to use Joe Biden's phrase, um, you know, that, that you're suddenly a conspiracy nut. Um, you know, um, it's just like they switched on Comey. He was he was the devil itself. I mean, Hillary Clinton blamed him for her loss. Now he's uh, Martin Luther Comey, a man for all seasons, because he's now attacking Trump. So range of permitted So are you, are you suggesting that the Democratic Party is essentially not capable of chewing gum and walking at the same time? I mean, <laughs> why can't you say, hey, we have questions about, you know, what the Russians might have been doing, and our voting system is, you know, our people of color are getting thrown off the vote all over our country? Well, you know, you'll find something interesting if you look at the reports. You'll get a few reports about what they call vote suppression, which is a term I, I despise. Someone steals your car, Tom. You don't say, my car's been suppressed. But it's right. vote theft. And you can talk about vote suppression, uh, uh, a fuzzy term. Before the election, you'll have a couple people uh, like Barbara Arnwine, some experts say, oh, the ID is, is reducing uh, the ability of African Americans to vote and poor people and students to vote. By the way, the ID laws are the worst in the nation in Georgia, and they were designed by Karen Handel, the candidate, when she was Secretary of State. So she designs the laws 
that make it easier for her to win the vote and, and stop. I don't mind if she wins. The problem is that if she wins by stopping black people and students from voting, which is what she did, um, you know, we, you'll get a few stories before the election, never, ever after. You just don't see any stories following up saying, well, exactly how many votes did the ID laws in Georgia uh, block? We know that in Wisconsin, a study by the Brennan Center put it at 300,000 uh, people lost their votes because of ID laws. Uh, so you think about Georgia, which is worse, and, and the 6CD. I mean, between ID laws, between the cross-check purges, between failing to register people, between uh, provisional ballots thrown in the garbage, um, it wasn't the fair vote. And you won't get that. You won't, they won't allow that story to come out because it breaks the myth of the wonderful American democracy we have. Yeah, well, that's a sad thing. Greg Pallast, the uh, absolutely br brilliant investigative journalist, <laughs> author, and filmmaker. You've got to see his movie. If you haven't seen it yet, it's available on Amazon. The best democracy money can buy. GregPallast.com, the website. You can tweet him at Greg underscore Pallast, P-A-L-A-S-T. Greg, thanks so much for being with us. You're the best, Tom. Thank Great you. talking with you, Greg. We'll be back.